So I want to start by being really upfront with all of you that I have struggled over the past two weeks with the juxtaposition between the lighthearted origins of the theme for this week's service and the reality of our time. I mean, in the reading, Tina Fey is joking about melting wax figures, and it just doesn't feel like a melting wax figures kind of time. However, as I've continued my reflections this week, it's clear to me that the principles outlined in our reading say yes, own our responsibility to contribute, or yes and, and make statements. These offer important tools for us as we do the internal and external work needed to fight to advance racial justice and equity. And we can always use a little joy and levity, especially in heavy times. So let me start with a little bit of background on how I got to Yes And. I'm a bit of an unlikely messenger as I had never taken an improv class before I settled on this topic. And I haven't acted since I was a chorus member in my middle school's plays. Several years ago, a therapist gave me the gift of Yes And as a tool that has been transformational in my relationships and has opened up my ways of thinking. I was struggling at the time with navigating how my partner and I were experiencing the same situations and were a part of the same conversations, and yet our takeaways, impressions, and emotions could be so different. What I came to realize is that we each hold our own truths, and the existence of my truth does not preclude the existence of another person's truth. They can and they must coexist. Yes, I hear and honor your truth, and here is mine. They can coexist. In realizing and appreciating that, we can find ways to build bridges. Now, as with everything, our words matter. Just using the word but when presenting an alternate view on a subject can have the effect of shutting down and invalidating the other person. Saying and opens up opportunities for mutual understanding. These two simple words, yes and, have taken on new meaning for me in the time of COVID-19 and as the ever-present white supremacy and violent racism in our nation has erupted in the public eye once again. I want to explore both with you today. With regard to COVID, I share the words of another female comedian, Amy Poehler, quote, we all think we're in control of our lives and that the ground is solid beneath our feet, but we are so wrong. Improvising reminds you of that over and over again, end quote. I think it's fair to say that we've all had plenty of moments over the past few months where we have felt the ground shift under our feet and where we've realized how small the scope of our control truly is. I also guarantee that we've all had moments when we've had to improvise. Parents improvising as teachers, frontline workers and hospitals improvising with PPE, families improvising to put meals on the table. Saying yes in this time of great improvisation is about accepting our current reality. Although, and this is important to me, it doesn't mean we have to approve of our reality. It's accepting that I don't know when I'll see my family on the East Coast again. I don't have to feel great about that, but I can accept it as the safest option for all of us right now. Now, as a sidebar, I wanna still acknowledge the very important role that saying no has in our lives for our safety, for setting boundaries, and for standing up and speaking out against acts of hate. That's a topic for a whole other sermon, the art of saying no. And it's something that I'm continuing to work on in my life as well. So back to improv. We can say yes to our current reality. We didn't choose it, but this is the scene we are in. And we can choose how to build on and respond to that reality every single day we can choose our yes and. I can feel cooped up and frustrated that my connections with people outside of my house have been reduced to little boxes on a computer screen. And I can be grateful that there's now a standing time every week when all five members of my family across three time zones and crazy work and personal schedules are always free to connect on a Zoom call. Yes and is especially important when thinking about how I show up in my community. 
As you use, we value the worth and dignity of all people with a special awareness for those who have been historically marginalized. Here are some of the yes ands that have been coming up for me with special acknowledgement of Leila Saad, whose writing has helped me to reflect on this. Yes, I can hate the fact that the color of my skin has conveyed a lifetime of comfort and ease not afforded to black individuals and persons of color. And I can choose to spend my privilege as educator, organizer, and writer Brittany Packnett Cunningham says, quote, you didn't earn it, so give it away, end quote. I can spend my privilege financially, physically, and emotionally. Yes, I can feel a full spectrum of emotions ranging from rage to grief, and I can find ways to process those emotions in a way and a place that does not burden my Black friends, colleagues, and community members. Yes, I can show up to support efforts by Black organizers and community organizers of color, and I can recognize that I need to take responsibility for doing my own internal work. Yes, I can falter and learn along the way, and I must keep going. We need to figure this out. So I mentioned earlier that I hadn't taken an improv class before setting down the path of this sermon. With the continued gift and curse of more time at home and more aspects of our life moving online, I signed up for an improv course through Second City, one of the more famous improv troupes based out of Chicago. It has been terrifying and exhilarating and a bright spot in my weeks to be goofy with a bunch of strangers and to push myself outside of my comfort zone. To be honest, it's been really nice to laugh and smile. Our instructor has explained to us that one of the great gifts of improv is our sense of connection and mutual support, that others will say yes to our ideas and build on them. There is also so much joy in remembering how to play again. We are complex human beings living in a complex time. May we give ourselves permission to find and create joy, even in the face of compounding tragedies. Joy can coexist with grief and rage, and it will help sustain us for the long road ahead. As we improvise new ways of connection during this time of isolation, May we find new opportunities to lift one another up, to say yes to and elevate each other's ideas and find ways we can contribute. This is the scene we are in. These are our times and we are in it together. May it be so.